how are we doing today? It's a video I'm very excited to film because I'm very excited to find out what I got. Because we are filming, oh my god, I can't even pick all the parcels up. We're filming a birthday book haul. It's my birthday. It's my birthday. It's my birthday. It's my birthday, it's my birthday to me. This book haul is going to be a little bit smaller than like previous birthday book hauls because usually a big chunk of these videos is a book sent to me by my family. Usually they get me a lot of books for my birthday but we just did presents a little bit differently with the move to Wales this year and how my birthday coincided with it. So this is just books sent from you guys which I am overwhelmingly grateful for. Thank you so much. <laughs> I am so excited to open these and it's so so kind of you to send me gifts on my birthday. Um, so sorry, just get into it. It's actually two days after my birthday. This is like a second birthday. I waited till I can film this video and I'm so excited. You guys are so kind. Let's find out what the books are. Cause like, <laughs> I can't wait any longer, but thank you so much in advance to everyone who sent me something. Now first, we've actually got one we don't need to unbox cause this arrived before we moved to Wales. So I had to open it then. And it is The Other People by CJ Tudor. Now this is from Jay. Jay says, happy birthday. It was one of my favorites in 2023. I hope you enjoy the book. Here's the thing, <laughs> CJ Tudor for me has become such a reliable thriller author and this one sounds so good. It says, driving home one night, Gabe sees the face of a little girl he knows in the rear window of the car in front. She mouths one word, daddy. He never sees his five-year-old daughter Izzy again and it's about him trying to find his daughter. And listen, I'm very excited for this one. Thank you so much, Jay. This is like a backlist book that I've been meaning to get around to for quite some time. I really enjoyed The Chalkman by CJ Tudor. I really enjoyed The Burning Girls. I really enjoyed The Drift. They were all like solid four stars. And here's the thing. I know it's not a five. I don't know if me and CJ Tudor will ever get a five, but being like a solid four star is almost as good for me as being like, you know, like there's some authors I give five stars and then I give them three stars. Like I don't know what I'm getting from them. I know what I'm getting from CJ Tudor. CJ Tudor knows what to give me and I'm very grateful for that. So that's our first book. Now let's open the ones that we don't know what they are, shall we? <laughs> oh, I'm so excited. Shut up. Shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up. <laughs> oh my God, Jesus Christ. Check out They've the blessed me. <laughs> oh my God, is there a note? <gasps> there's no note. Oh, if you got this for me, please let me know. There's no no. Oh my God, I am so excited. I'm getting bedraggled. I need to calm down. It is Jane Austen at Home by Lucy Worsley. So Lucy Worsley has done the Agatha Christie book that I really want to read. However, I have found out there's a lot of spoilers apparently in Lucy Worsley's Agatha Christie book for like Agatha Christie books. And I'm, you know, I'm trying to make my way through them, but it's gonna take me a while, Lucy. But she also has written one about Jane Austen and I watched some documentaries. I don't know how similar like the information will be from what the documentaries were, I guess more in detail, but I really enjoyed the documentary I watched that Lucy Fairley did on Jane Austen. And oh my God, I'm so excited. Oh my God, please let me know if you got me this. Thank you so, so much. This, Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. I have become a bit obsessed with Jane Austen. I've always had an affinity with Jane Austen. Like, uh, you guys know, with my history of Pride and Prejudice, I loved things I was younger. Did anyone watch Austen Land? Does anyone remember that? I think Jennifer Coolidge was in it. It was ahead of its time. Austen Land, incredible. Incredible. <laughs> incredible film. And, um, you know, this is kind of the non-fiction I'm really interested in, like, reading more about women that really interest me. So both this and Agatha Christie book I need to get to. I feel like if there is spoilers for Jane Austen books in this, A, I've read a bigger chunk of them. There's not as many books to get through. Like Agatha Christie has hundreds. Like Lucy, calm down. <laughs> you expect me to have read all of them. But um, you know, with Jane Austen books, you kind of do know what's gonna happen. And I don't feel like knowing what's gonna happen is the worst thing in the world, you know? So, oh, thank you so much whoever got me this. This is one I really wanted to get my hands on. So thank you so much. Oh, there's two books. Okay, let's see what we've got. Oh, these are from Shanice, one of my patrons. Thank you so much. And he says, happy birthday, have a great day. Okay, let's see what we've got. Oh, okay. First we have got This Book Kills, which is like a YA murder mystery that came out last year that I've been very intrigued by. So this guy dies, it's set at a private school, this popular guy dies, and he dies in the exact same way that our main character wrote about a character dying in a short story she wrote, and then she receives a text thanking her for the inspo. Not you are on the vision board, oh my god. <laughs> I've been really intrigued by this one since it came out, and I'm always, 
here's the thing. I always want more YA murder mysteries that I can enjoy. Because I think there's something very special about a YA murder mystery and like the tone it strikes. Like I love A Good Girl's Guide to Murder. I really enjoy the Trudy Devious series. But I feel like sometimes it's a little bit difficult to find the good ones. So I'm hoping this will be one of the good ones. So thank you so much, Shanice. Shanice also got me Silver Night Trade by Silver Marina Garcia. I am so excited. So this one is about, it's set in like the film industry in the 90s in Mexico City. And it was about this film that was never finished because they believe there's a curse over it. And our main characters are trying to finish the film together. I'm really excited. Here's the thing, me and Silver Marina Garcia, we've had mixed luck. I loved Mexican Gothic, then everyone loved Mexican Gothic. I thought Daughter of Dr. Moreau was okay and I didn't really enjoy Velvet Was The Night. So we've Looks like. But Silver McGrathy is one of those authors that her synopses always get me. Like her synopses always really, really excite me. So I think, I mean, I think this could be a win, but I'm going into it a little bit tentatively because I know we can have mixed results. But her synopses always get me. Her synopses always get me. Her new book, I haven't even read the synopsis yet. I saw De Taylor Jenkins Reid post a screenshot of Silver McGrathy's uh, 2024 release and I already know I'm gonna read that. I already, I don't even, I haven't even read the synopses of that, but just the cover. I already know, how does she ensnare me like this again and again? <laughs> I'm obsessed. This is so kind of you guys. We've got a note, thank God. I hate when there's no notes. Melissa, happy birthday, Meg. I hope this year is kind to you. Thank you so much, Melissa. No, you didn't. <gasps> ah! One of the books that I have almost gotten so many times in bookshops over the, since it came out, Rouge by Mona Award. Oh my God, this is such a good pick. <laughs> I have read only Bunny, right? By Marina Award. I've already read Bunny, which I didn't love as much as everyone else did. I thought it was good. I enjoyed it, but I didn't love it as much as everyone else. But I feel like this one, it could be really good. So it's about um, this character who's been obsessed with skin and skincare videos for as long as she can remember. Her mother dies, that sends things into a bit of a spiral. This is a surreal descent into the dark side of beauty, envy, grief, and the complicated love between mothers and daughters. <gasps> I think this is gonna be really good. I'm really interested in this whole like, this springing up of like horror surrounding um, beauty and like aging. I know there's, na is it Natural Beauty? That was also nominated in the Goodreads Choice Awards for horror. I'm really interested in the subsection. As someone who loves like beauty YouTube, skincare YouTube, whatever, it's so interesting to see that turn into like a bit of a horror subgenre or like sub topic. I think this is gonna be it. I think I'm really enjoy this. I think I might enjoy this like some people enjoyed Bunny and then haven't enjoyed this. Like I think this could be it for me. So thank you so much, Melissa. Next one. Let's see what we've got. You guys are too kind, honestly. What have we got? Oh, shut up. Who got this? Hannah off of Patreon. Happy <laughs> Happy birthday. That'll make sense in a second. I mean birthday. I haven't read this, but it's on my TBR for obvious reasons. I'm using as a guinea pig, a fun nonfiction, hopefully. It's gonna be butts, a backstory. Oh my God. <laughs> I'm so, guys, I'm so excited for this one. So this is about bums. <laughs> so you admit I have a nicer ass for probing. A looser ass. Excuse you? <laughs> I haven't heard of this until I saw it nominated for one of the nonfiction categories in Goodreads Choice Awards. And I think this came second. This got more votes than it had ratings just because people like me voted for it because it's about the <laughs> butts. And I'm, I'm obsessed with this, talking about the perception of women's bodies. I also think the, the perception of like what, what butt you should have is very interesting. Like when I was growing up, it was like, does my bum look fat in this? Like that was a bad thing. And now you want a fat, fat ass, do you know what I mean? <laughs> and as someone who, this isn't something you guys know, because you don't see my lower half very often, but I have quite a large de derriere. Um, and that, that does form part of my identity in my personal life. That, that sounds weird. It's just, you know, my mum will be like, oh, you have a great thumb, don't you make it up better yet? You know what I mean? <laughs> it's going down a route I don't know if we want to get into. But not funny, haha. -ha. Funny, weird. But this fascinates me. Oh, I'm gonna have to read this soon. Thank you so much, Hannah. Also, it's not too long. This is fascinating. This is fascinating. I am so, so excited to read this. Oh my God. I'm so excited to read this. Thank you so much, Hannah. That is such a great gift, my goodness. Oh, this one, oh, I'm gonna have to get a scissors for that one. Let's do all the other ones first. There's a parcel that went home before I changed my Amazon address to this address and my dad had to send it to me, but I need scissors. Cause like, look at how, like, I can't show you the front necessarily without, we'll do that. Like this man, 
<laughs> Whenever he wraps birthday and Christmas presents, it's a running joke that like you can't get into them because he just like very tightly wraps everything. Oh, what is this? <gasps> oh, the snow night again. Okay, please let me know if you got this again. Oh my God, we have got Island of Whispers by Frances Harding, illustrated by Emily Gravett. This is like a, I think this is middle grade and it's kind of a graphic novel, not entirely. Like it's a story and it has got illustrations by Frances Harding, who I've read only one book from, but I feel like could become a favorite author. I own a lot of Frances Harding books now. I think I own, this maybe is my fourth that I haven't read. <laughs> She's making up. I wonder like which author makes up the biggest percentage of my TBR, probably Frances Harding. And I think this is like a middle grade that she's come out with. There's a trick to seeing the dead. On the island of Merlank, the dead must not be allowed to linger. Their ghosts can kill you on sight. When young Milo is thrust into the role of ferryman following his father's sudden death, he is tasked with carrying the dead away. Pursued by a vengeful lord and two malignant magicians, Milo must navigate strange and perilous seas where untold threats whisper in the mist. Does he have the courage and imagination to complete his urgent mission? I'm so excited. I think this could be like a magical little book. Like, do you know, it reminds me of like, um, A Monster Calls by Patrick Ness, that kind of book that is maybe written for kids, is maybe written for someone older. I mean, is pa A Monster Calls by Patrick Ness? It kind of is. It's a horror, but maybe, I feel like a kid could read that. You know what I mean? I feel like we're like, oh, that's not for kids. But like, what I was reading when I was a kid wasn't for kids either. I was eight years old sitting there with Breaking Dawn on my school desk. Like, yeah, I'm that bitch. Absolutely. <laughs> I'm a little bit concerned. But you know, like a middle grade that's very heartwarming, that's very emotional. The illustrations look absolutely beautiful. I really like the illustration style. I just saw one, where was the one I just saw? I really like the illustration style, it's very unique. So thank you so much to whoever gifted that to me. Please let me know who you are so I can thank you. <laughs> oh, this is a thick book. Oh my God, there's no note again. What is Amazon playing at? Please let me know if this is from you. <laughs> We have got The Book That Wouldn't Burn by Mark Lawrence. This is a thick boy. I'm not sure I knew how thick it was. How many pages is it? Okay, it's not that bad. It's 560 pages. That could be worse. I've heard really good things about this. Oh, this is a very short synopsis. Let's read this together. Eva has lived his whole life trapped within a vast library, older than empires and larger than cities. Leveria has spent hers in a tiny settlement out on the dust where no one goes and nightmares stalk. The world has never noticed them and that's about to change. I love a good like fantasy about books. Look at the cover, it's a library. It's a motherfucking library, do you know what I mean? I love anything, like I loved the Library of the Unwritten and I really need to continue on with that series. Like I love fantasy surrounding around books. And I, do you know what? I, I'm glad this is long. Yes, it's intimidating. I think I prefer fantasy that's long. I really like a fantasy where you really get into the nitty gritty and get into the depths of it. I feel like I've been reading a lot of fantasy lately. There has been very, it's felt very surface level and I feel like I'm hankering after a fantasy series that really fucking dives into it. The Greenbone Saga, Jade City, Jade War, Jade Legacy. I didn't love Jade City, but by the time we were in Jade War and Jade Legacy, they were so long. <laughs> that we were, we knew the world in so much depth and I adored that. So I think we've now got three books that you need to tell me if you got me, please. <laughs> These ones are the Jane Austen ones, please, because I hate not knowing and not thanking people. Okay, let me go get scissors and we'll open this last package. How am I even supposed to get into this? <laughs> Steven, what are you doing? I think I'm just gonna have to like cut the top of the package off. Oh my God, you guys can't see what I'm doing because this is requiring intense focus. Oh my God, oh, let's take a break, Jesus. Oh my God, who is this from? Emma, some sequels to make 2024 easier. Well, I wonder what the other book is. Let's talk about this one first. Thank you so much, Emma. We have got, what are the chances? The Archive of the Forgotten, <laughs> which is the sequel to the Library of the Unwritten. <laughs> I literally just mentioned that, okay. Is it a coincidence? Is it a coincidence? I ask you, is it a coincidence? Thank you so much. This is a series I really need to make progress in because I feel like I'm forgetting what happened in the library of written and written a little bit. I'm definitely going to need like a, like a, what's the word? Spoil, no, like what's, recap. There we go. <laughs> so I don't want to tell you what this one's about, but basically the library unwritten in hell is like where these books live. I'm going to do a really bad job of explaining this book. <laughs> And we've got these characters who had to go on this kind of quest to save the library. And it was very good. I really, really enjoyed it. But like I said, I'm definitely gonna need uh, <laughs> a recap. But I loved the humor of these. I loved the world building. I loved the characters. So thank you so much, Emma. I'm really excited. This is a series I feel like I should prioritize finishing this year. What is our other sequel? <gasps> this is perfect. Oh my goodness. Okay, we've got Into the Riverlands by Nevo. So this is the third in the Singing Hill cycle. And my mum. <laughs> 
<laughs> my mum gave me the fourth. It was my fault. I put the fourth on my wish list, which I never really do with sequels when I don't have like the earlier ones. But um, I put the fourth on my wish list and I didn't have the third yet. So I was going to buy this soon. Anyway, so thank you so much, Emma. I'm going to be reading this soon, actually. Probably next month. Or the month after, I'm going to be reading Into the Riverland. So this novel series, they're following Cleric Chi as they travel around and they gather stories from people. And I just love this series so much. I've read the first two and I just think they're really a love letter to the art of storytelling and I adore it. I love it so much. I think these, this series is incredible. I think the way that Nevo writes is absolutely amazing. I own two of her full length novels that I need to get around to because I just love her writing. I think it's so unique. Oh, it's going to be so good. These are lovely, lovely short little novellas and I'm so excited to make progress in this series. So let me put all these books together. Okay, this is my birthday book haul, which I am so excited to read all of these. Thank you so much to any of you who sent me one of these. I am so appreciative. And again, if you're one of the people who I didn't have a note, please message me so I can thank you personally. But this is just so kind of you guys. Thank you so much. I'm so excited to read so many of these. Oh, these are these are really good picks for guys. Some of these I think I'm going to read very, very soon. Like, I'm going to read Into the Riverlands very soon. I'll probably read Island of Whispers for that video, the same video as well. But I need to get to butts ASAP. <laughs> So thank you so much guys. I really appreciate your generosity. So I'm gonna go read the first page of all of these like I do when, <laughs> whenever I get new books. And yeah, I'll see you guys soon in another video. Bye.